nanohub.org. You can follow along with this presentation using printed slides from the NanoHub. Visit www.nanohub.org and download the PDF file containing the slides for this presentation. Print them out and turn each page when you hear the following sound. Enjoy the show. So in this segment, we will be talking about RTDs with realistic doping profiles. And in the previous section, we looked at put, uh, RTDs with linear potential drops. And I normally call those Mickey Mouse diagrams because you can very nicely explain the physics of RTDs, but that's not how they look. Um, a typical RTD electrostatic potential profile looks more like on this slide. And the reason is as follows. This is a, in the central RTD, this is a resonance phenomenon, a, a quantum transport phenomenon. And you want to get electrons close into the structure, and you want to have a contact in the structure. But if you have dopants that are very close to the RTD, they basically destroy the functionality of the RTD. Because you have impurity scattering very close to your quantum device, and you want to avoid that. So typical structures keep the doping away by 20 to 100 nanometers. So that is what is shown here in a uh, RTD where there's an undoped spacer around the resonant tunneling dial by 50 nanometers. And you can sort of see that on the bottom slide where I'm showing in green, uh, bottom figure on the left, where I'm showing in green the doping profile. So there's a non-intentional doping of 1E15, 50 nanometers to the left and the right of the RTD. And then there is an intentional doping of 1E18 um, to the left and the right of that. That's the flat. So you're going high doping, no intentional doping, to high doping. So what physically happens then is, well, you have a lot of electrons in these contacts. They start to diffuse out into the central region. That means you have, as shown here in the blue line, you have more electrons than belong there. The electrostatic potential will counteract that. It will try to see, well, I have a lot of negative charge here. I got to get rid of that. So it tries to push that out. And therefore, the electrostatic potential pushes up from being flat band. It pushes, tries to push the electrons out until the Poisson equation or, uh, finds a charge balance. Okay? So that is why this conduction band is, is very much bulged up. That's more typical how an RTD looks in reality. So overall, this, this whole RTD structure is raised way above the Fermi C. Okay? It's really rising way above. So now the question is, what happens if you apply a voltage? <coughs> so let's apply a voltage. So on the bias, what you have is the potential drops mostly in the collector, but a little bit also in the emitter. And if the potential drops a little bit in the emitter, you sort of form a triangular well right here at this notch. And from first year quantum mechanics, you know that if you have any arbitrary negative potential in a 1D geometry, you will bind at least one state. You can show that analytically. That means whatever, if you ever have a triangular shaped well, even if it's extremely shallow, you will have one bound state that is sitting in that triangular well. And why is there a triangular well? Well, basically, there is a, a you want to apply a voltage between these Fermi levels, and this is computed in a semi-classical way here, in a semi-classical charge self-consistent way, where the potential is, uh, the Fermi levels are held constant on both edges, on the left and the right, and it's assumed to be flat in the collector and in the emitter, and it's assumed to drop linearly in the, in the center. And the resulting potential profile is shown in blue. 
So there's a pile of electrons that piles up against this emitter. And that is holding up the charge. That's why there's not a potential dropping right here in the emitter. Meanwhile, there's no, not enough supply of electrons on the right. That means the potential can drop linearly because there's zero charge. Zero charge means your Poisson equation drops linearly. And if there's a lot of charge, the potential doesn't drop linearly, and that's what you see in the emitter, because there's a lot of charge. So the key message to take away is that there's an emitter bound state that's forming here. There's a charge depletion on the collector, and there's charge accumulation in the emitter. And in a semi-classical way, it looks like this on the bottom right, where there's a semi-classical charge pile up against the barrier. There's a little bit of charge in the well, and there's charge depletion in the collector. Yes. So, <laughs> let's hold questions to uh, to the end of the section. Uh, all right. Also, this is semi-classical charge, and my point here is that this is not quantum mechanical. This is incorrect in the quantum mechanical sense, and we'll, we'll resolve it later. <laughs>